Welcome to the clinical scenarios and this is your case number 37. Here we have a 26 year old man coming to the physician with the sudden onset of redness, watery discharge and itching in both the eyes. His vision is slightly distorted from excess tearing. So basically vision loss is not there. It is excessive tearing which is causing the blurring of vision. Okay. And he otherwise feels fine. So that is very, very important. The patient's past medical history is significant for obesity, asthma, sleep apnea and chronic back pain. On eye examination, there is bilateral injection with granular appearance of the conjunctiva, mild eyelid swelling and clear discharge are also noted. So clear discharge is again they are signifying because you know whenever we have bacterial discharge or uh, you have uh, you know this um, fungal discharge, viral discharge, it may not be clear. So that is important. Pupils are equally round, reactive to light, lungs have a scattered wheezes and the heart has a faint systolic murmur at the base. What is the most likely diagnosis? Now I know you must be thinking that what has uh, this uh, condition of eye to do with the heart uh, faint systolic murmur at the base? See sometimes it may be normal also and it has nothing to do with that but that that depends upon your acumen means you know you have to decide that what is the information that is given in the question that is relevant and what information that is given in the question is not relevant so that is also important you have to see this the options that they have given is allergic conjunctivitis anterior uveitis atopic keratoconjunctivitis and viral conjunctivitis. So let's review this question again. The information that they have given 26 year old men who is coming with sudden onset of redness and watery discharge. Now mind you this is not sudden painful diminution of vision. The condition is a Acute. This condition is acute. There is um, redness and watery. So there is acute redness that is present but it is not having the uh, sudden painful diminution of vision or sudden painless diminution of vision because they are saying that slightly uh, vision is slightly distorted due to excess of tearing but actually there is no blurring. Actually there is no blurring. And a very, very important thing that they have given in the question is itching. Very, very important thing is itching. Now, if you remember, even in classes also, I always tell you that whenever they give you itching, whenever they give you itching, that is always signifying one thing and that is allergy. Because whenever they are talking about infectious conjunctivitis, they will always signify that it is a purulent discharge, it's a mucopurulent discharge, yellowish sticky discharge, you know, they have to say something about the discharge. But when they are telling you about the allergic condition, they actually uh, signify one thing that is itching. So whenever it is bilateral equally and occurring uh, uh, with the itching, then always first think of allergy that is a clear dictum. Now third important thing is that vision is not getting affected. So I think one thing is very very clear that it is not a case of anterior uveitis because anterior uveitis will cause what? It will cause the sudden painful. This will cause sudden painful diminution of vision and they have very clearly said that there is actually no blurring, only excesses of tearing is there and it is due to that tearing that the vision is getting cumbersome and uncomfortable and actually there is no vision loss. So anterior uveitis obviously could not be there. Okay, now the other things are atopic keratoconjunctivitis. Okay, now it could be a atopic condition, it could be a conjunctivitis, but look at the word kerato here. Kerato means corneal involvement and if there is corneal involvement, some amount of diminution of vision is again going to take place and they are saying that actually there is no diminution of vision. 
third important thing. They are saying that there is actually granular appearance of the conjunctiva. So what do you mean by this granular appearance of conjunctiva? So what happens in cases of allergic conjunctivitis, if you look at the palpebral conjunctiva, we have got hexagonal or pentagonal. Right? We have got the polygonal raised areas which is actually giving the granular appearance to the conjunctiva. So this granular appearance is nothing but the cobblestone papillae. It is the cobblestone papillae granular appearance that we get in the palpebral conjunctiva called as the cobblestone papillae and then they are saying that we have got pupils which are equally round it is reactive to light now pupils are reactive to light this is again helping me to ruling out the uveitis in cases of uveitis cornea will be showing edema lid edema will also be there I will have KPs KPs will also lead to blurring of vision I will have ciliary muscle spasm that will also lead to diminution of vision then vitritis afterwards could be there then I can have cataract like so many things are there due to which blurring of vision will be there pupil will be also what type of pupil do you get in acute anterior uveitis I get the meiotic pupil which is fixed non reactive to light so this is very very clear that it is not uveitis and it is not a keratoconjunctivitis cornea involvement is not there now you have got two things either it is a case of allergic conjunctivitis or it is a case of viral conjunctivitis now if I talk about the viral conjunctivitis you know viral conjunctivitis may very very typical is follicular conjunctivitis so either it can be a case of follicular conjunctivitis or the other thing that could be there will be the acute hemorrhagic or it could be the acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis now follicles you know they are telling you the granular appearance now this granular appearance viral cannot uh, be exactly symmetrical they are saying that it is involving both the eyes and they are also saying that it is having the granular congestion along with the itching so itching is one thing that is not be very very likely to be present in the viral conjunctivitis and that granular appearance that they are talking about is not due to the follicles or uh, it is uh, absent totally in cases of acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis because you know in acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis you get a bloody red color it's not the granular appearance that you are getting it is you are getting the bloody red color in cases of the acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis so because they have said that it is a granular appearance both the eyes they are saying that there is itching both the eyes and look at the age of the patient the patient is 26 years male so all these things together make it a diagnosis of allergic conjunctivitis now I, if I put together I can say that most probably it is a case of VKC that is vernal keratu conjunctivitis most probably it is a case of vernal keratu conjunctivitis which is a case of this spring catar now though spring catar is a misnomer spring catar is a misnomer and mostly it is common in hot and humid climate right it is a hot and humid climate but uh, what are the other things you know it is common in males it is common between 5 to uh, 20 years of age now though they have given 26 but mostly it is common between 5 to 20 years of age you get the bilateral involvement you get the interstitial involvement right and it is the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction IgE mediated that you are going to get in these cases. Now these people have the exogenous allergy and the typical things that you are getting is the cobblestone papillae. Now this cobblestone papillae that you are going to get give you, is typically giving you the bilateral granular appearance, the uh, polygonal areas that you are getting in the palpebral conjunctiva. Then what are the other things that we can get? We can get the Horner Trenta 
spots you can also get the hornet trenta spots you can get the cobblestone pepeli even uh, in the later cases we can get the shield ulcers we can also get the shield ulcers congestion is also present and you know discharge is ropey discharge now this is again very important the discharge that you are going to get here is very very stingy and that is why it even leads to a pseudo membrane formation and what is that called as that pseudo membrane formation is called as the maxwell leon sign that is actually called as the maxwell leon sign so it's a clear discharge i'm getting bilateral involvement a young male itching and granular appearance of the conjunctiva so all these things are going in favor of the vernal keratino conjunctivitis which is a type of allergic conjunctivitis most common allergic conjunctivitis which is found in the males moreover if you look at the question they have also given you the history of uh, scattered wheezes so that means this person has a history of allergy because you know wheezes are found in the asthma so that is also allergic disorder and mostly what happens if your patient has allergy it will not be you know symptomatic in only one organ that will come in other organs also so this patient and they have uh, given you that his past medical history significant for obesity for asthma sleep apnea and chronic back back pain now what is significant for you at this level the significant thing for us is the asthma so he is a known case of allergy so therefore this is most probably a case of allergic conjunctivitis so i hope you have learned how to rule out very closely related options also because sometimes you know uh, listening to the viral in this watery discharge we feel that maybe this is a viral one but actually it's not viral they have clearly said that uh, his vision is distorted due to the tearing past medical history is also just uh, suggestive of allergy itching is there granular appearance is there so that is actually suggesting the allergic conjunctivitis still if you have any doubt feel free to ask your queries and ping me up at any of the social media platforms you can follow up uh, me on the insta also for the daily updates and uh, videos we are sharing lot of motivational as well as academic stuff i am planning to bring certain more things before your exams so give your uh, valuable feedback also that uh, how much you are liking the video so that i get a boost up making more and anything related to the topic or academic stuff you want to ask you are uh, most welcome you can ask me on my telegram group and channel as well as facebook group and channel Thank you and happy ophthalmology